Greetings, mortals. I am the Fallen Shogun, and welcome back to even more Rise of Ruins of Hell 2. So, I have spent two whole in-game days expanding the future food production. As you can see, there are now three established farms and a huge amount of food. I've even extended the water to three. Now, we're not fully done, because now we have plenty of food but nowhere to store it. And I'm also running out of places to put stuff down, and people are being born. How dare they? But no, at this stage in time, because winter is coming, you need to extend, expand, and exploit your peasants. So I'm going to put down two more food storage areas over here. What am I doing? I'm going to destroy the terrain. So I'm going to put these next to the farm so it's not too far away. Also, I have built another water purifier, as you can see over here, and another large fountain. Now, obviously, I was going to actually put this properly to be an established rain catcher, but I need water storage. Winter is currently four days away, so water and food storage are your primaries. Now, of course, you can just keep going. But yeah, the houses have upgraded too to have more spaces. Housing is important, of course, to keep your people safe, but you want to have large amounts of food and water storage. So make sure you have, like, multiple thousands of water, so probably another large fountain before I'm finished. Definitely two more food storage, so I have three food storages because I've got food everywhere. I've got seven farms currently. Like you might not need seven farms, I'm just obviously extending my farming over here, but I have seven farms, eight people working them. I'm going to extend that to ten or eleven people working them because let's face it, I should. And I'm going to drop down another motivate land over here. I am thinking of extending a water down the centre here to make it look nicer because I haven't yet built any kind of water purifiers over here, maybe like build them down the bottom there because as you can see I'm extending this and making a nice little area for my people to be. Oops, go away. So yeah, right now you want to extend, let's uh, build up 64 rocks and 8 iron ingots. How is my... where is it? Where's my forge? That's my forge. How's my forge? Forge is good. We have plenty of ironing, so we need to get this going on. We're going to extend the keep, get more houses and stuff up and running, but yes. There you go, we have this built. Let's upgrade it again. Because the more food, the better. Who are you? Now you're a waymaker in the black shirts. Okay, white shirts are chefs. Now, the problem you're going to have now, I completely sealed off the enemy so they can't extend. You now have the corruption threat, as you can see. So threat increases, the corruption becomes trapped. The more space in the map the corruption desires to control the card, the higher the bar will be. As a result, more monsters will spawn in addition to the already increasing daily spawn rate. So because I have sealed off the top of the map and they can't expand to the top of the map, the corruption is getting angrier. That means the enemy is going to get more insistently violent. Also, I appear to be out of arrows. How are we doing? Are we still making them? Oh yeah, I ran out of wood. I have three people working, but we ran out of wood. Because right now, none of this wood is actually inside of my control zone. So they're not actually mining it. So build this here. Get that back in the control zone. We can destroy this later, but to be fair, but there you are. Also, it doesn't really help. There's a huge amount of rubbish up here still. So this was my fault. We're expanding too much at the beginning. Make sure you're not destroying an entire forest. If you don't need an entire forest destroyed, it becomes a bit meh. There you go. I've actually dropped down and motivate here and here. I've got some more mana as we go along. But yeah, at this stage of time, you want to be preparing for winter. Huge amounts of food storage, huge amounts of water storage. You do want an excess. You don't want to be going for the bare minimum just in case. You want an excess, because what if you suddenly gain a huge amount of migrants? What if you suddenly, I don't know, have a breach in the wall? You don't want your people busy trying to get food and water. When you're trying to make sure you survive with everything else. So make sure you have plenty of houses, plenty of food, plenty of water. My rule of thumb is always four food per person per day minimum. So for me, each day would be 70, 140, 180. No, 70 or 40. That would be 280 food per day. So for me to survive winter... I would be needing about 1,500 food. So as you can see, I don't really have much food. So that's why we're extending significantly. We have a lot of food over here for me to do it that way too. So yeah, make sure you have all the food. What's that? What's going on? Oh, I accidentally put down a motivate land. Is that what the hell's going on? 
So yeah, I need a lot more food, so I want to keep on extending my storage. Of course, I also have um, all of the cooked food as well. Like all the actual proper rations, but yeah, I need to make sure we have plenty of food. That is my priority. Make sure I have at least a thousand food, at least. Now I can, like I say, harvest it myself. I've got plenty of food over here to the left. Like all the way down over here. Actually, it's straight down more than anything. But to the right, we've got definitely plenty now. So if need be, I can just massively harvest all of that. But you want to make sure you're doing enough. Also, the Terminator is somewhere in our village. So hopefully he will be destroying the wet enemies. The wet enemies. The wet enemies. Some more people. Let's add another two to the farms. But yeah. Food storage, water storage. The enemy you should be okay with as long as you have good defences and a huge amount of golems. Like, I'm not too worried about the enemy. Even without the arrows, I've got plenty of magic towers. I've got a huge amount of golems. Okay, food is now pouring in. Let's establish it. Oh, it's a large right now. Yeah, food's going around. Obviously, right now it's being turned straight into stuff in the kitchen. I'll upgrade the kitchen too now I'm at it. And this has been upgraded to have an extra six slots because now an established keep. Next level, still pretty doable. Grab that as well. I do like how it starts looking more and more castler. But there you are. We have the beginnings of everything. But yeah, the enemy is still trying to expand. We're kind of pushing them back. I have a fair few organisers now. At this stage in time, you want a lot of organisers to make sure your supply of resources is moving around significantly. You just fall asleep on the floor. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Who cares? Where's my tool smithy? There you are. What are you currently set to make? Maintain 12, da, 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 5 everything. What are you set? You're set to unlimited, aren't you? That's your kitchen. You're the forge. Let's actually have 10 of these. 20 of these. There we go. I might build a marketplace. A marketplace, of course, you can trade for things. We don't really need it, but we can if we need to. Food is currently being brought in, as you can see. So this is why we have a huge amount of garbage around the bottom of these, because it's letting the food go to waste, because they're Muppets. Uh-oh. Where's it going? Where's it going off? Uh oh, that's the centre of the village. That's a bad one, actually. That's a very bad one. Uh oh. Quick, where's the where's the mend? I didn't use the mend often enough. There's a mend. Uh oh. So you can mend buildings yourself. Oh, that was a bad one. Nearly lost a building. Okay, put you down. Go straight up destroy all of this. Go away. Did it block the actual maze? No. So always make sure it never blocks the maze. That's a bad one. An earthquake blocking your maze will kill you. Majorly, majorly kill you. Whew, that was close. So upgrade your houses. Make sure you have plenty of food storage. Make sure your people are actually doing stuff with the food. Let's actually put more farmers involved. As you can see, they're getting involved, putting the food into storage and all sorts. So yeah, that's what your farmers should be doing. You should be looking at increasing their numbers if you're having an issue with your food not being taken away, but you have plenty of space. So you have 500 food, 200 cooked, that's 700. Yeah, we need more. We've got, we've got time though. As you can see, things are being built. Oh, Khajiit. Perfect. So each one of those holds about 200 each, so that would give me an extra 400 food. It starts pushing me up there. The house will have to hold the rest. We haven't got anyone making water bottles. So water bottles would be very, very useful to stop your people constantly having to go back for water. Like right now, of course, I have no water bottles, which means winter's pretty deadly. 
but not as deadly as some of obstacles course where people will literally dehydrate and die. In winter it's just, I suppose it's not too deadly, it's more of an annoyance. Winter your problem will be clothing and stuff like that. You know, literally actually keeping them warm. They will have to stay in their houses to keep warm. How are we doing? Makeshift house. Not sure what to make these slum lords or not. I might just make them slums. Sleep fees is minus three percent for time. Mm, might make it ten percent at the end. Might mean they stay in there forever. But yeah, as you can see, the food area is doing pretty well. We have plenty of storage coming along. And we seem to be doing pretty fine. As you can see, our actual lumberjacks are now properly cutting up stuff because we've made it so that they will go over here. Let's actually start motivating the land somewhat more. But yeah, you do want to make sure food, water is important. I don't actually care about the monsters at this point in time. If they do breach, we have plenty of golems. If they don't breach, we've got plenty of mana powering the defences. Our only issue is if suddenly the enemy becomes... Well, finds a new route through, I guess. Like, maybe you weren't keeping an eye on things and suddenly the forest has been corrupted away. There's a hole in your wall of light. Always make sure the firewall is highly, highly active. Like right now, as you can see, my firewall over here, I grew this. And I can see where it stops, so this won't breach. And over here, it won't breach either because it has to go through my defensive line. Or this little fire pit over here, which I need to delete. I can make four now. There we are. So you always grow up your forest when you're using them. Obviously you want to move the forest to somewhere more useful, actually have lumber yards and stuff around it. But right now, just make sure you actually have lumber. Am I out of... I am. Because right now I'm completely out of lumber, which it means I'm not actually making any boards. Because it's all being used constantly to obviously build stuff like this. But I think we're nearly done. Okay, that's now complete to just food storage. Mm. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. As you can see, I'm helping out too. As you can see, organisers are highly active. I've got plenty of organisers now moving about. Organisers highly, highly useful. This is now an upgrade to a stronghold. Small. What's the next level? 128, 8 iron, 30. See, so this is... How much rocks do we have? We should be okay. Upgrade it again? Yeah, why not? What are we doing for stone? Yeah, we can do that. As you can see, I'm heavily upgrading my actual village centre, just to make sure we have enough buildings. Like, I'm not using them right now, just make sure I have them to actually carry on extending, because right now we have a minor wood crisis. Oh, that's much better. We've finally got wood coming in. Now they're actually mining nearby, they've finally got wood coming in. Okay, I can reach that now. There we are. Because they won't really mine outside their own zones too much. You have to make sure they're inside them. So always keep an eye on how far your wood has retreated. Hey. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, things are moving. I might like remove these farms down here, put another ancillary here so it's near the actual row of crystals and so on. You want to make sure ancillaries have at least one or so near areas so, can, so your actual organisers move about. Organisers do become more important later on at this stage of time as you can see. At the beginning, you don't really care. Like organisers, they exist, but you kind of need everyone working on direct resource harvesting, growing, building, gathering. You don't really want people carrying it. If need be, you can carry it yourself. So yeah, it becomes important now, but not obviously later on. Reinforced, more boards. 
as you can see, water's coming in. Where are you going? Oh, again! Two in an episode is a bit rare. Don't destroy my food storage. Don't destroy my food storage. Oh, if I lose the food storage, I'll be very unhappy. So yeah, the one thing most likely to dick you over in the game, ironically, is random chance. Thanks a lot, Ray. Let's go sod off. Yeah, as you can see, builders and organisers are heavily all over this, but we do need more wood. I think we're doing fine, honestly. Food's still constantly going up. Organisers are highly active. Everything's badly damaged, that's awesome. So I'm gonna put down a few more repair things, so yeah. And the greatest threat you'll have is volcanoes and meteorites. I haven't done a meteorite strike in a while, I don't think I've had one in this series currently, but that's that's okay. So one of the future things you do when you finally get there, because I'm not too sure how much this series will actually cover it. When you finally get to the stage where you're willing to send out peasants to the next areas, just basically rinse and repeat. That's all you really do. You know, once you've established one base, you use it to send supplies and people over to the next few bases. There isn't really too much in the way of change. Like, obviously, you alter things for the actual topography of the map. But you don't really change too much in how you build. It just means you have a lot more resources to really supercharge villages. And obviously, as time goes by, you know the best way in how to make them look. Because I'm building this as a mess to show you how to build things. Obviously, as you can tell, I'm slowly, constantly changing how it looks to make it look nicer to me. But building it nice to me isn't really a good way of building things straight away when you're learning. It just looks weird. Like, honestly, one of the things I like doing is building, like, eight of these... Essence Collectors, right around a Cullis Gate, so it looks like some kind of temple. I wouldn't recommend doing that when you first start it, because that just looks dumb, but it's something I do. I also build my city to look like a literal castle. Like right now I've built a few walls, but one of the things I like doing is like pushing it out, putting towers on four corners, then building like an inner area, then a moat, then another wall, then a moat, then another wall. So literally I build multiple layered castles. That's what I like building. Again, that wouldn't really work for a how to because that's a little bit more advanced. You'll wonder what the hell I'm doing. So I've had to kind of cut out all of my more creatively stupid ideas just to make sure you know what's going on. Yeah, right now I'm just keeping an eye on things. We're up to 600 food, 200 storage, stored... Um, cooked food, so that's 800 total. So you want to make sure you're doing well with that. Where is my kitchen? It's over here. As you can see, we've got good stuff going on. I might even upgrade it. They're going to build into this. That is good. But yeah, as you can see, food is coming along. But we're coming along nicely. Missed. Completely and utterly missed. How did I miss? There we go. But yeah, food, water, they're your biggest issues. Like, I don't even care too much about the lack of arrows. I do care a little bit about the amount of damage you receive, but you know. Look at that coming along nicely. I know it's not completed, it's still too many wooden buildings. I need it to be fully stone. Oh, there we go. There's a trash slime in here. 
Okay, are we out of stone yet? Not yet. See, my miners are really going for it now. The gap's gone up, so we actually have more wood coming in. We're finally giving wood deployed to there. Yep, perfect. Look at that flow of resources. Builders and organisers working together to build me a better house to live in. Also, as you can see, I've added another couple of gates here and there. The actual road's coming along nicely too. The gates, like I say, you don't really need here and here. It's just an aesthetic thing. I wouldn't recommend building them unless you're trying to protect certain areas. Like, nothing can get into these houses unless it breaks down a gate. Nothing can get to this end unless it breaks down a gate. So I end up either going through the wall or pathing over to here. So yeah, you can kind of build certain layers where they would go through certain buildings. Like, I'd highly recommend having them go maybe through here, then up here or something. Because then it takes even longer and they destroy less important things. Like, don't have your farms at the front. Don't have your storage at the front. Because if the enemy breaks through, you kind of lose your farms and your storage. So you build it in a certain way. Like, I'm going to make sure that the enemy can't actually path into here through here. Like, maybe seal this off so they have to go round. Like, I might lose these farms and this established landfill, but I also have these farms and stuff over here. So make sure things path in the ways you want them to. Although, again, if you do it in a certain way, it takes even longer. Like, if I shut this area off, my people then have to walk all the way around. Or, all the way around and do it that way. Which, as you can see, if someone's over here, once it goes to the front, you then have to go up, round, through, down here. So it takes longer. So you have to decide what's best for you, really. Because the enemy will decide to path through gates if they're in the way. Because they are buildings. Iron helmet. I'm not making any armor, am I? Really not. Probably should. Yeah, what's the next stage? Established stronghold, 128, 56 cut stones. A bit out of my limit at the moment, I think. Actually, maybe not. Got plenty of food storage now going on. Woody trash, rocky trash, yeah. Where are they all coming from? Oh, they're repairing things, okay. So one of my goals now is to start pushing forward, I think. Let's have a look, 600. Yeah, still 800. And again, if need be, I can just help out by doing it myself. Like, it's slow going, but you still do it. Nothing's stopping you from ever helping out your peasants. They're there because you want them to be. They probably don't want to be there. I get a couple more reinforced wood storage is up and running too now I think about it. Actually, I don't even need this anymore. Now I've got all this stuff and get rid of that. I do build it to actually extend forward, so okay, that's fine. So I have 10 children. So it only has like 68 youthful members of society. Maybe. Might have some elderly too wandering around somewhere before they die. But we have good productive workforce. That still needs more arrows, that's reinforced with arrows, that's reinforced, that's still got some left, that's doing okay. So this one needs arrows. That, ooh, oh, 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 I see you now, eee. There we go. That's why you keep an eye on where the earthquakes are. That, if I hadn't got this bit here from the old times, that would have blocked the entire section off. Good on you. You're Cat the Doggo. Everything's peaceful, that means I'll be able to resurrect some people. So yeah, when you can, resurrect the dead. You should have like four or five of them. I think we've actually shown off all the events that can happen. We've had the Blood Moon. He never wanted to add in, like, raining water elementals, which is annoying. He should have added in water elementals. Kept telling him. Should have done it. Should have done it! 
But anyway, I have been. Land still getting up. The fallen show has been even more how to. Like I say, at this point in time, you just want to be extending your food and water supply to where you want it to be. Like this area is now doing well. You want to make sure you have a huge amount of storage. Like seriously, you want to make sure the storage is absolutely paramount right now. You want to be making sure you can feed everyone. Housing, that's up to you. You should have just enough for more people. Don't extend too far if you can't feed everyone. And of course, water is going to be a major one when all the water freezes over. But until that point, I've been the Fallen Shogun. We're going to carry on doing this, extending our food and water supply over here, and probably building these purifiers over here. And also a lot more food, water fountains. Either way, ciao for now, people. Bye-bye.